The merciful love of the Lord fills the earth. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. Alleluia. This Mass is offered for all the people of our collaborative, living and deceased. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome. We welcome parishioners of St. Jude and St. Edward in our collaborative and anyone visiting us from other communities. All of you here and all joining us through the media and anyone listening in our parking lot on 90.7 FM. Let us acknowledge our sins as we begin this Sunday liturgy, asking the Lord for his pardon and peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole, the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters his, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, 
there's nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. If you've ever visited the city of Rome, I hope you were able to include a visit to the Vatican. It's a wonderful experience to have. The Vatican is enclosed within the city of Rome. The main entrance is through St. Peter's Square. And there's numerous gates through which you can enter and normally those entryways are wide open. You can come and go as you like. But if you ever go to the Vatican for a special event, such as a Wednesday Angelus in St. Peter's Square with the Pope, <clears throat> then you will find it necessary to arrive early or wait in line for a security screening. The last time I went there with a tour group, it was for one of the Wednesday audiences with the Pope, and I was dismayed at how late we were when we arrived. The lines were terribly long. It didn't look like there was any way we were going to get in before the Pope's arrival. 
And yet our Italian guide was very relaxed, very confident. He didn't tell us what was on his mind. He simply said, this way. And he led us, quite mysteriously, past one line and then another in what seemed to be the wrong direction. We were heading toward the back of St. Peter's Square, away from the Basilica. All of us in my group wanted to know, where are we going? But the tour guide would only say, trust me. <laughs> Finally, we came upon this private entrance at the far back end of the square. We made a sharp turn and there it was. And we knew it was an entrance we weren't supposed to use because there were no lines. However, it was guarded and equipped for screening just like all the other entrances. And so our Italian tour guides, he starts to converse, converse with the uh, people there at the gate. Um, there was much shouting going on, but then finally we were allowed in. And I'll admit it was an embarrassing experience. After all, there were still very long lines all around us and many people saw this happening. Many other uh, visitors to the Vatican watched us go in through this gate and then nobody else. And they started shouting too. <laughs> and they gave us these dirty looks. But the fact remains that the gatekeepers let us in. We were admitted. Whatever our guide did, he knew exactly what he was doing. I don't think it was virtuous, but the reality is that sometimes if you have the means, if you know who to talk to or you say the right things, you can unlock gates that are closed to other people. But I think the lesson here is uh, sometimes it's really important to just follow the leader and trust. We don't always know what's going on, where we're going. And it might even seem like the wrong way sometimes. But certainly when we follow Jesus, it's always the right way. As Catholics, we are blessed with so many ways to get closer to Jesus and to experience his leadership. It's not just we who have to search him out, but he calls us, as the scriptures say. And he comes to us. He directs us right from where we are. And although we all have one good shepherd in Christ, we all follow him along our own path sometimes, as well as together as his flock. We have both experiences. In light of all this, in light of all the ways that God calls us to himself, in light of all the ways that we can encounter him, we have to be careful. We must be careful not to be misled because there are many voices that sound like they might be of God. There are many things that seem like they're good for us, but if they don't lead us to Jesus, and in fact lead us away, or if it contradicts what God himself has decreed for us, then we're in danger of becoming lost sheep. We have to be mindful of that. And so we need a certain amount of authority in our lives where we recognize we have a shepherd, we have a guide, we have people in our lives who have been entrusted by God to lead us. And wherever there is legitimate authority in the church or in civil society, that's meant to help us to hear the right voices amid all the other voices and to be encouraged. That's especially true of church authority because it's the authority of Jesus. Now it's true that not all of our experiences of authority are good. In fact, authority has earned itself a very bad rap over the years for man-made rules that we wonder why are things like this? And then also terrible failures, particularly 
when it comes to protecting the vulnerable. We wonder how can we trust anything that comes from this authority if these things have happened? And that's a legitimate question. And we need to make sure that our authority is indeed the right authority. Because sometimes what appears to come from the Good Shepherd is not. And yet, the Good Shepherd is there. And he does lead us through authority. And God set up the church with apostles and their successors to preserve and support what's been given to us for our benefit. And rightly exercised, church authority serves the people of God with loving concern. That's one of the ways that we differentiate what is truly of God and what is not. Even the same person can sometimes be serving God, but then sometimes be going the wrong way. That's our human experience. But is God there to direct all of us together, to get us all on the right track, even those he has put in charge? And in fact, especially those he has put in charge. Are there ways that God corrects faults, rights wrongs, gets rid of the bad, and supports the good? All of us have personal freedoms, the freedom of choice, but also the ability to go our own way. And that's all very important. But God knows we all need guides to help us. After all, the dangers are many, and we're more than a little vulnerable. We don't like to admit it, but we are. And so it's important for us as Catholics, when we are making decisions, when we're facing certain key events in our lives, that we know what the church teaches about things and we avail ourselves of the helps that we need. That can include talking to a priest if, for example, we're going to get married. We want to know what does the church require in that situation? And is that for our benefit? Is it for our good? Well, I can say it certainly is. If we find ourselves struggling with moral or spiritual problems, do we want to face those problems alone? Or do we want to know that we have the support of a family? And that family includes the church. So it's good to talk to somebody who might have a little bit of expertise in such matters, experience working with people. If we ever face a difficult decision, maybe a medical problem or something else, something really serious, doesn't it help to know how the church can guide us? Doesn't that take a load off our shoulders and give us some peace? I assure you it does. We also have many influences in the world that are poisonous to us. And we have to be able to differentiate what is good and what is bad. Even if you go into toy stores, game shops, there are things there that are of the occult. Things that we as Catholics should be avoiding. But they're presented to us as fun and harmless and pretty. So we have to be careful. We also have to be careful about what is offered to us as medical advice or medical care. There are some practices that are tied to Eastern mysticism. And some of those have been watered down. They've been the, all of the uh, influences of pagan religions have been taken out of that. And that's fine, usually. But if those influences are still there, if there's a tendency to work with mysterious energies or uh, things that we don't really understand, well, God has warned us against such things, that they are harmful to us. We could end up experiencing influences that take us away from him. Do we sometimes look for a means of control in our lives that is not God? Do we have a hidden desire to not need God. 
I think that's part of the human condition, but we have to be mindful of it and know that we can trust God to give us the right ways. He is the good shepherd. We want to be following his voice. Even priests must recognize our need for authoritative guidance. We can get very headstrong, I'll admit it. We can get overconfident and think we always know what we're doing. But I am grateful for all the support that I have as a priest from people in authority. It's not like they lord the authority over me. They have expertise. And they say, please consult us if you come across these situations. Let us guide you through it. And they do. Sometimes that lengthens the process a little bit. Sometimes we have to be patient, but it's there for our benefit. Fortunately, Jesus has made many important promises to his church, the institutional church and all of us personally. And that includes that he will be with us always until the end of the world that the gates of hell will never prevail against the church. So let us be mindful that it's with the help of the whole church, which is blessed and guided by the Holy Spirit, that we keep Jesus as our gate and our guide. And he is also our protection against many wolves. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was the heart of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to the life of the world to come. Amen. As we continue our journey through the Easter season, we raise our prayers to Almighty God with joy and hope. For the people of God, may we continue to serve as a beacon of light and hope in our broken world and so attract new members to participate fully in the life of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As the church celebrates National Religious Vocational Awareness Week, we pray for lay pastoral ministers, monks, sisters, brothers, deacons, and priests. May they commit themselves to faithfully serving the people of God and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children preparing to receive their first Holy Communion, that the gift of the Holy Eucharist will draw them into an unending friendship with Jesus the Good Shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and for the victims of war and civil strife, especially in Ukraine and Sudan, Syria and Myanmar, and wherever violence disrupts a community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all who are suffering from natural disasters, that God will be a shepherd to them, guide them to the assistance that they need, and sustain them as they recover. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all who have died, especially Jack Glennon, whose funeral was celebrated this week, and for the deceased members of our parishes. May they celebrate everlasting life in Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own needs and intentions, and those in our parish book of intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, you are merciful and good. Continue to guide each of us in our personal faith journeys and help us all to recognize you in everything we do and in those we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us ask the intercession of Mary, our mother who assists us in every need. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands who will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, Robert, our Regional Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
The good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep, and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. Both in the tower. Okay. Yeah. The other one is there. It's okay. over there.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So happy to begin this holy day celebrating Mass with all of you. Thank you for your prayerful participation, both those of you here and those joining us from other places, electronically. So a reminder to all of you who are joining us electronically, if you're able to come to the church right after Mass, uh, we offer communion in the parking lot from 8.45 until 9.15. Thank you to all of our ministers at this Mass. Uh, thank you for your participation in those ways, serving the Lord uh, in special ways. Before the final prayer, I ask that we say together one more prayer. And that is the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. And this is offered against the Satanic Convention happening in Boston this weekend. We pray through the intercession of St. Michael that God's light will shine on all those who are participating or are curious, that God will lead them away from all that and to his life-giving light. So on the back cover of your pew books, the Breaking Bread books, we have the prayer to St. Michael. I want to make sure I say it the same way. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Have a great day.